I upgraded the cutter head of my old Kitty 636 jointer planer combination with a segmented Shilex cutter head from Bird Tools. Let's see how it performs. This video does not show any of the installation of this cutter head. I have a separate, very detailed video about this that shows all the steps we went through and the trouble we went through installing this cutter head. And it also is a how-to guide on how to set this machine up again and get it running. This is linked in the video description and at the end of this video. Now it's just about the performance and my opinion about this cutter head. I've prepared this piece of spruce and this piece of oak with the old cutter head. Half a millimeter pass on the jointer, a three millimeter pass on the jointer, and a one millimeter pass on the jointer. Now I'm going to repeat these cuts and then compare them to the old cuts. Now let's start comparing. So the straight knife half millimeter pass was very smooth except for this part here where it's quite fuzzy because there's a knot in the piece. It ripped out tiny chunks here and yeah here it's not smooth and then smooth again. The half millimeter Shilex pass I looked at gray direction. It's very smooth all the way except again in front of the knot because softwood is not very forgiving it's very little fuzziness but it's there let's look at that at low light with a low angle light you can see this fuzziness here and here where it's smooth to the touch that's how this looks at low light this is how the fuzzy spot of the straight knives looks at this light interesting would be how does the shilex head perform on this So as expected the fuzziness is still there a little bit, it's not as bad and the cutter head didn't rip out small chunks, this is still from the old cutter head. So it's better but it's not perfect, as I said softwood is just not forgiving. The 3mm softwood pass with the straight knives was very smooth, I hit a good section of the grain here. Everything is nice and straight except for one little spot here where the grain changed direction, but yeah, this is very nice. The Shilix, of course, same results, absolutely smooth except for grain direction again. There is pretty much no difference on a absolutely straight grain piece of spruce between the two color heads. At a low angle light you though can see from the straight knives a little nick in the knives. Here another little one and some straight lines along the board. On the Shelix you can see none of this, it's a new cut head so it shouldn't have nicks. And you can see none of the other lines going along so the Shelix is a tiny little bit smoother but it's also new so I don't know how much uh, you can compare that. Now the one millimeter pass in oak hardwood. This has some figure and grain changing going on and it looks smooth but the straight knives did struggle with that which you again can only see at low light. Here's a section where a lot of little chunks got ripped out. You can clearly see the defects of the knives and this pattern of ripples along the board which comes from the full length blades cutting full width cuts every time. The other side planed with the Shelix is absolutely nice. I don't have a ripple pattern, no defects of course again and no fuzziness, no chunks got ripped out. It's perfect. 
I again try to joint this side with the Shilak set and see if I get a better result here. Everything is gone. This is absolutely smooth now. It's now just like the other side. Smooth all along the board. So jointing whatever depth on soft wood is as good as the wood allows. And on hardwood, the performance is just absolutely perfect. Some also say that you don't need to worry about grain direction anymore. So I tested that and that's not true. This is the piece of maple from the beginning of the video again. And what I did is I jointed it and then jointed it from the other direction to right to the middle. And it looks absolutely smooth on both faces, but you can't feel what I can feel with my fingers. So I'll show you again with low angle light. Here you can see the difference. This is smooth all over the place and here it's fuzzy all over the place. So there's still a right and a wrong way to feed the material through. You still should take care of the grain direction. So that was the little cut quality test. I tested more wood species and uh, this cutter head makes all of them smooth. Next thing is dust collection. When jointing a lot with the straight knives, I always had the problem that this dust collection hood plugged up at the four inch port. The problems are the shavings that get created. I kept some from the straight knife cutter heads and as you can see, there are many long bits and especially if you cut deeper, then you get a lot of them and they tend to plug up also big dust collection ports. These are shavings from the new cutter heads, all nice little chunks. This will never plug up anything. Smaller shavings require less volume, which means they are more compact in here. And that means I don't have to empty it as frequently. So no more plug ups, less frequently emptying this. I like that. Next point would be sound reduction because these color heads are always promoted with they are so silent and it makes a ton of a difference. And indeed that's true, they are a lot quieter. And that's cool the first few times because oh it's a new noise and yeah it's quieter. But then in the real world I wear ear protection for everything. so doesn't really matter that much to me. The noise reduction is nice, but I wouldn't say it will make a huge change, in my opinion. I did test planing, not for cut quality, but instead if there's a difference in the cut quality between the two feed rates my machine has. On softwood, I can't really see a difference, so I can use the faster feed rate up to the finishing pass on softwood. That's good. On hardwood, however, at the slow feed rate, everything is fine, perfect finish. But at the fast feed rate, I get a little pattern of ripple lines. Here you can see it. So if I'm looking for a really good finish on hardwood, I should switch to the slow feed rate for the finishing pass, at least an oak. So that's it for the testing for now, because I can't say more about this before I haven't used it for actual projects. So I also can't tell you if it will pay for itself before I haven't used it for actual projects. And it's a special situation for me because my cutter head was sponsored by my viewers who support me on Patreon. All the money from there goes back into tools and shop upgrades like this one. And thanks again for that. And if there are more people who would like to support me in that way and make videos like this possible, I have it linked in the video description. And what probably a lot of people want to know is I got this cutter head from Holbrand.com. They had my machine listed, so I ordered it there and it got delivered four months later. That's something you have to keep in mind if you also decide on upgrading. And it cost with shipping and tax fees about 750 euros. That's what these things cost. So what I recommend an upgrade like this. If you're looking for an awesome cut quality, good dust collection and the easy maintenance of never having to set the knives again and to change them, just unscrew them and rotate them. Definitely yes. But only if you have an already decent machine with 
good tables, good guides, good components. The cheap machines that are mostly made out of sheet metal don't get an upgrade like this for that one. Also it has to be a machine that you have relatively easy access to the cutter head and where it's not too hard to change it. If you watch the video where I changed the cutter head on this one, we discovered a lot of problems and had to solve quite a few things. It was difficult, it took very long and yeah. If you have a kitty machine like I do, I wouldn't recommend it. But other than that, sure. And if it's a jointer planer combination, then that's perfect because you pay for one cutter head and have both machines upgraded. That's the best value for money. I highly recommend that you also watch the video where we installed this cutter head. So you can also see what is involved in upgrading other than spending quite a bit of money and waiting a few months. And if you want to know even more about this machine, where we got it and how I built this card that it sit on, I've made a video about it when I got this machine and well, everything is linked in the video description. And before installation, I planed this side, I jointed this side. The problems are the shavings that get, the problems are the shavings that get, the problems are the shavings that get, that get, the You make a mess just for a video demonstration. Cool. So what I recommend an upgrade that we, so would I recommend an upgrade like this? So would I recommend an upgrade like this?